Hello and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we are continuing our systemd journey. We'll talk about rootless systemd services, lingering, targets, and starting services at boot. My name is Philip. Let's get started. Let's start with explaining what a rootless systemd service is and why it can be useful. Rootless systemd services also known as user-level systemd services, are services managed by a regular user systemd instance. Such services are not managed by the system-wide systemd instance running as root. Every user can have its own systemd process that manages user services. Such an approach has certain advantages. First of all, by running services under a user account, you minimize the risk of privilege escalation if a service is compromised. Let's say, if a root service is compromised, the attacker has full system access. If a user system service is compromised, the attacker only has user's privileges. Second of all, users can manage their own services without requiring root privileges. So you can create, start, or stop your own services without affecting other users on the system as a whole but you still get all the benefits of systemd, like automatic restarts, logging, starting at boot, resource limits, and more. Let's demo that. The task at hand is to temporarily share some files within the local network. The simplest way to do that is to run an HTTP server. We'll use miniserve. It's a simple HTTP server written in Rust that requires zero configuration. I have it already installed, so I will just run miniserved followed by the folder to expose. And that's it. Our server is listening on port 8080 TCP. Mind that, by default, processes run by regular users cannot listen on ports below 1024. Okay, let's try accessing the server from within the local network. Perfect. We can instantly get the files using a web browser. Of course. Exposing your home folder to the network without any authentication is a security risk, but this is just for demo purposes. So, let's make this more practical. Keeping the terminal open for the service to operate is not the most convenient thing to do. To work around it, I could run the command in the background with the ampersand and make it immune to hangups with nohub. The output will be redirected to nohub out file. Another way to run the service in the background is to use tools like Screen or Tmax. For example, we can run the service in detached mode and later reattach to the session. However, those solutions don't integrate well with the rest of the system. A much better approach is to create a systemd service that will handle everything for you. Automatic restarts if the process crashes, dependency management, status monitoring, resource limiting, logging, and more. Let's try that. I will run the familiar systemctl edit command, followed by the force option to create the service if it does not exist, and full option to edit the original file and not a drop-in. Before I provide the service definition, let me show you one thing. I'm not able to save the file in the etc systemd system folder where unit definitions live, as it's owned by root. Hence, I cannot add any new files there as a regular user. Luckily, each user on the system can have their own instance of systemd called the user-level systemd. Basically, each user systemd instance runs under their own user context and is separate from the system-wide systemd instance. Using system-level systemd is straightforward. Only thing we need to do is add the user flag to any systemctl command we execute. Let's try creating the service with systemctl edit command. This time, I will add the user flag. That tells the systemd that we want to use the user-level systemd. From here, the process should be familiar. We create a service section. This section defines how our service should be started and stopped. Within that service section, I will add exec start and provide a full path to our binary. Let's set the restart policy to always. If service crashes, it will be restarted regardless of the exit code. Now let's save the unit definition. If I list the service content with cat command, we'll notice that the unit file is located in the user's home folder. Mind that, system-wide services are stored either in lib systemd system folder or etc systemd system folder. Okay, let's start our service. Mind that I've added the user option. 
Now let's check our service status. It works and is controlled via user level systemd. Let's see that in action. I will kill the mini serve process. Now let's check the status of our service. It's still running. It got auto restarted due to restart policy set to always. Let's connect to our service from within the network. Works. Long story short. As each user can have its own systemd process, you can easily create various unit types yourself and systemd will control them. Unit files are stored in your home folder. Just remember that due to restricted privileges, you cannot bind to ports below 1024. Before we move on, there's one important detail to check. What happens when you log out? If I try calling the service again, it's no longer working. Let's log back into the server and check the status of the service. It's dead. When we logged out from the system, the service was stopped. But why? Let me explain. Here's another session on the server, this time as root. Let's search for the user level system D process for user Philip. There it is. Mind that, it runs under user privileges without requiring root access. It manages user specific system D units. Let's now log out from the system and search for the user system D process again. The process is no longer there, so it cannot control our service. Is there anything we can do to keep the systemd process running despite the user locked out? In fact, there is. We need to enable lingering. Let me explain what that is. First, I will log back into the server. In systemd, there's a dedicated process called login manager. It manages user logins, sessions, and seed management. To interact with this process, there's a dedicated login CTL command. Let's run login CTL show user command followed by the username. It queries the login manager for information about the user, like its ID, name, active sessions, but also the linger status. Lingering means that the user systemd process will continue to run even after the user has logged out. Let me enable the lingering for user Philip. To do that, I will issue login CTL enable linger and the username. Mind, I'm running the command as root. Now, if I query the login manager again, we'll see that lingering for that user is enabled. To prove that it's working, I will simply log out and then search for the user level systemd process for the user Philip again. Process is there. It's still running. That means that any service managed by the user level systemd will continue to operate. Let's check that. I will log back into the system and start the HTTP server. Then I will log out and try connecting to the service. It works, despite there's no user session. If we look at the process list for user Philip, we'll see that thanks to lingering being enabled, our user level system D process is running. It controls the HTTP service that's also running. Few things to mention. The login manager is system wide and runs as root. Hence only root can enable lingering for a specific user. You cannot enable lingering yourself without elevated privileges. Second thing is, you need lingering enabled for other user level system D units to work, like for example, user level timers, sockets, paths, and so on. We'll be diving into other unit types in future videos. Okay, we have our service ready. It works even if the user is not logged into the server. System D will make sure it's up and running and will restart it in case it crashes. Perfect. However, if we would reboot the server, our service would not start automatically. That's to be expected. Not all services are needed at all time. We are in control over which services run at boot. Before we go to enabling our service at system boot, we first need to understand the concept of systemd targets. In general, targets define system states. Think of it as checkpoints during the boot process that group related systemd units like services, devices, and so on. Target says, to reach this state, we need to start these specific services and other units. Let's list targets in our system. For example, a network online target is reached only when the network connection is fully operational. Let's say you have a service that cannot function without a working network connection. You can then specify to start this service only after the network online target is reached. Another example, local file system target is reached only when all local file systems have been mounted. There's also a so-called default target. That's the target we try to reach. 
In our case, it's the multi-user target. Let's now see all the units that need to be active to reach the multi-user target. What do we have here? To reach the multi-user target, a bunch of services needs to be active, but if we look closely, we also see other targets that depend on different services and so on. Mind that, in system D, services start in parallel, so different targets can be achieved also in parallel. Moreover, all targets can be active at the same time. You can have all local file systems mounted and the network ready at the same time, right? So default target is a sum of other targets and units that need to be active. Some services depend on other services or targets. Some on the other hand can be activated in parallel. Let me show you two more things related to targets. To check which services took the longest to start along with their dependencies, we can use systemd analyze critical chain command. If we look at this tree, we see it took 9.8 seconds from boot to reach the multi-user target. At 8.6 seconds from boot, the network was online. It took 1.2 seconds for the Docker service to start. We can see that Docker service waits for the network to be online and the multi-user target depends on the Docker service being up and so on. To see the full unit dependency list, we can issue the systemd analyze plot command and redirect the output to a file. We can then open the file and see all the dependencies and times. Okay, now that we have some understanding of systemd targets, let's try to configure our service to start at boot. First thing to note is that if we look at the service, it's static. That means it can be started manually or as a dependency, but cannot be enabled to start at boot. To link a service to system boot process, we need to add an install section and say which target needs this service to start. In user level systemd, there's only few targets to choose from, with the default target being the active default. We see it depends on all other user units. Let's now open unit file for our service and add the install section to define how the unit integrates with the boot process. Next, let's specify that our service is wanted by the default target. This means that when the default target is activated, it will start this unit. If we look at the service status, we see two things. Preset enabled, it means that the service is intended to be enabled by default. Here's info that the service is currently disabled. Let's enable the service to start it at boot with systemctl enable. Behind the scenes, a folder target name.wants is created, along with the symbolic link to our service. If we look at the service status, it shows enabled. If we check the dependencies to reach the default target, our service is on the list. Now, the final test. I will reboot our server. Let's try accessing the service. Works. And that's it for today. In this video, we explored rootless systemd services, the power of user-level systemd, lingering to keep services running after logout, and the role of targets in managing service startup. With this knowledge, you can now run your own services without root privileges, improve security, and automate your workflows more efficiently. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss future episodes in our systemd series. Have any questions or want to see more topics covered? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.